We all know that Indians have long held a special affinity for gold. In fact, did you know that Indians collectively hold approximately 25,000 tons of gold, becoming one of the largest gold holding nations in the world? So when you wear a lot of gold, you obviously get that wow rich feeling. Now here, while well, my intention is not to ruin the sense of pride and self-esteem, I'm sorry to say, but holding physical gold in the form of jewelry, gold coins, bars is not a good option to invest. I say so due to several risks that come with it like storage costs, making charges, risk of theft and more. Hello and welcome to our channel 5 Minute Finance. In this crisp video, we are going to explore various ways to invest in gold. We'll compare them on several parameters and figure out which one is the best. When you have lots of jewelry, you have to run the risk of theft, so storage is a big task. Then there are purity issues as well. It's a costly affair. So there are making charges of 10% or even higher when you buy a jewelry. Then you have to pay rent for the bank locker, so storage charges, insurance charges, and then there is 3% GST. Given its numerous drawbacks, investing in physical gold is clearly not a great choice. So to overcome the limitations of physical gold, you can opt for the digital route, which includes number one, digital gold. That can be purchased online through various apps. It is basically 24 karat 99.9% .9 pure gold stored in big walls insured by the seller. The USP is that you can invest as low as 1 rupee in digital gold. Number two is gold exchange traded funds, gold ETFs. So just like shares are traded on stock exchanges, gold ETFs can be bought and sold on exchanges. Gold ETFs invest in physical gold and stocks of gold mining or refining companies. Number three is gold mutual funds. Now these can be called a shopping cart of gold ETFs as they invest in gold ETFs. You can invest in most gold mutual funds through the ET Money app where you can compare all the gold funds and invest in them at 0% commissions that is for free. Number four is the government backed sovereign gold bonds. Now these bonds are issued by the Reserve Bank of India from time to time. They are linked to the price of gold. But what makes them popular is the additional fixed interest rate of 2.5% per year. One common thing between all these options is that the returns of all these are linked to gold's price. But they differ in availability, affordability, risk, costs, liquidity and taxation. Now let's compare different ways to invest in gold. We'll start with availability. So in most cases, digital gold, gold ETF and gold mutual funds are readily available for purchase. But SGBs are a bit different. Now these bonds are released after every few months by the RBI and this buying window remains open for 5 days. Next, let's compare these options on affordability parameter. So you can buy digital gold for as low as 1 rupee. Gold mutual funds and gold ETFs are next in line. So you have to purchase a minimum 1 unit of an ETF and the price can vary from 50 to 100 rupees. Gold mutual funds also allow you to invest a minimum of 100 rupees. On the other hand, if you want to invest in SDBs, you'll have to buy at least 1 gram of gold. Since the price of all these options is linked to the price of gold, they all run the risk of fluctuations in the price of gold. So let's look at other than market related risks. If we talk about digital gold, while purity is not a concern, neither is storage. The biggest risk is that this space is not regulated. Yes, there is no regulator such as SEBI or RBI to protect your interests as an investor as of now. So it runs a big risk of lack of regulation. That way, gold mutual funds and gold ETFs don't hold any such risk. They are backed by physical gold. They are regulated as per SEBI guidelines, don't have storage or theft concerns, hence low risk. Even SDBs for that matter being government backed are safe from these risks. Next parameter is costs. In the case of digital gold, there is no storage or making charges, but there is a 3% GST. Another major cost is the price difference between the buy and the sell price. So if you see on this well-renowned platform, the buy price of 1 gram of gold is 6,291 rupees, but the selling price is 5.8% lower than the buy price. On the other hand, gold ETFs charge between 0.5% to 1% annually, which includes expense ratio, DMAT account charges and brokerage. Next are gold mutual funds that charge an expense ratio of 0.1% to 0.2% plus the expense ratio of the gold ETF where they are investing. 
but SDBs are an exception. They don't have any visible expenses. Instead, they offer 50 rupee discount per gram if you buy online. So do you think SDBs are leading the race? Well, not quite yet. We need to assess the liquidity of these options and SDBs suffer a significant setback in this regard. If gold prices get stuck at some level or they don't shoot up, you might want to sell. Hence, liquidity is important. From that standpoint, digital gold, gold ETF, gold mutual funds can be bought and sold quite easily. But SGBs come with a long maturity of 8 years and a lock-in of 5 years. And if you want to sell them before 5 years, you can do only on stock exchanges where the volumes are low. So you might have to sell your bonds at a discount as compared to the market price of the gold. Moving to the last parameter, let's look at the taxation aspect. Any gains made by selling gold ETFs and gold funds will be added to your income and taxed as per your slab rate. Now, in the case of digital gold, if you sell your investments within three years of purchase, your gains will be taxed as per slab rate. But if you sell after three years, your gains will be taxed at 20% after taking inflation into consideration. The next we have sovereign gold bonds. The 2.5% interest income is taxed as per your slab rate, but the maturity amount is totally tax free. But if you sell it before maturity, the gains would be taxed. Now there are two parts to it. So if you sell on the stock exchange between 1 and 5 years from the date of investing, your gains would be taxed at 20% after factoring in inflation. The another part is, if you plan to sell your investment after 5 years but before the maturity to the RBI, it is advisable to consult a tax expert due to lack of clarity in this matter. Well. Physical gold and digital gold have many drawbacks. So if you want to invest for the long term, SDBs are a good option. But if you want to make smaller investments, make tactical moves or rebalance your portfolio, gold funds and gold ETFs offer the necessary liquidity and a better choice. This brings us to the end of this video. Share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel for more crisp and insightful videos. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.